We're going to talk now this morning with clinical psychologist Dr. Steven Ragusia about the mentally ill in prisons. Dr. Ragusia, how did we let our prisons, our jails, become the surrogate mental health hospitals? Um, well, it's, uh, it's a pretty clear history, actually. Um, in terms of treating mental illness, um, here in the United States, what we had done for um, many, many years was we built our mental health treatment system around a, uh, a very large series of state mental hospitals that were built all over the country. And in every state, there were these very big hospitals. And I'm talking about thousands of patients in each of these mental hospitals. <clears throat> and that was the model for mental health treatment. There weren't, there really weren't many options in terms of curing people or treating them well. Um, so we sort of stuck people who were mentally ill in these big state hospitals and, uh, and left them there. Now, some of these hospitals were really quite nice. Um, in a lot of ways. Um, for example, I used to work at Norristown State Hospital outside of Philadelphia. And um, uh, Norristown was built as a farm so that there were barns and cornfields and cattle and all of the patients who were in the hospitals worked as farmers. Um, so even though they were very frequently psychotic and talking to themselves and hearing things that weren't there, what they did was during the day they worked on the farm. So they helped plant the corn and harvested the corn and fed it to the cows and when the cows needed to be milked they helped milk the cows and they packaged all that milk into little cartons just like everybody else does and uh, uh, it helped to feed them and it also gave some money back to the state for taking care of them because they sold the milk. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and that's how things went in most states for decades. Then what happened was uh, President John Kennedy had a sister who was mentally ill. And as part of his, one of his major presidential initiatives was he developed what was called the Community Mental Health Center. Uh, concept and in every county in every state of the United States was built a community mental health center which was staffed with mental health professionals like psychologists and physicians and social workers and people like that and art therapists and and occupational therapists and all these people worked to provide treatment to mentally ill people in their own community. The idea behind Kennedy's initiative was that it would be cheaper to do it that way and it would be better for the patient. That way the patients would stay connected to their family, connected to their home communities, and maybe they'd get better and eventually get well enough to just be totally involved in the community and not need the services of the community mental health center anymore. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, that was the theory. Right. Then what happened was, um, uh, quite frankly, Richard Nixon got to be president. And Richard Nixon uh, began to defund the community mental health center, center system so that less and less federal mon money went into paying for it less and less state money went into paying for it and more and more the burden fell on the individual counties. <clears throat> As that was going on, what they were doing was closing all these big state mental hospitals that were f subsidized by the federal government and the states. Okay? Because the idea was people wouldn't need them as much. So, for example, Norristown State Hospital, which at one point housed something like 25,000 patients, by the time I was working there was down to about 2,000 patients. Yeah. All these people had been discharged to their home counties and were being cared for by community mental health centers. But as the money dried up, the community mental health centers dried up mm -hmm. so that fewer and fewer dollars were available in people's communities to actually care for them in those communities. So what happened to those people? And the answer is they wound up becoming what we call homeless. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they walked the streets of their towns talking to themselves and getting in fights and arguments because people would pick on them because they were talking to themselves. 
or the police would tell them to do something and they would think that the police were part of a communist plot or, or Martians trying to implant chips in their brain and things like that. And they'd get arrested. And the police wouldn't know what to do with them, so they'd put them in jail, just like any other prisoner. Um, and uh, that happened not once, but hundreds of times, thousands of times, and ultimately tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of times. Um, so that eventually we arrived at a position where there were far more people in prisons than there were in state mental hospitals mm -hmm. or in community mental health centers. And that's where we are today. Right. Our prisons are flooded with mentally ill. About, depending upon the research you look at, at present about 10 to 15 percent of any prison or jail population consists of severely mentally ill people. Not just mentally ill people, not people who are mildly depressed or a little anxious or anything like that. What they are is people who are suffering from schizophrenia, um, which is a disease of the brain that affects the frontal lobes of the brain. It's a lot like Parkinson's disease in a lot of ways. But instead of making you shaky, what it does is it makes you hear voices and see things that aren't there and act kind of crazy um, and feel kind of crazy. Um, and also people with bipolar disorder, people who have wild mood swings from highs of mania to m suicidal lows of depression. Um, and, and those kinds of people are what constitute those who are severely mentally ill. Mm -hmm. okay? um, so about 15 out of 100 people in jails and prisons have that. Mm -hmm. okay? So we have a lot of people in prisons in the United States. We have about two and a half million people in the United States in our prisons and jails. About, by the way, about three times that many are on pro probation or parole. So you're talking about a lot of people. Two and a half million people is five times the size of Miami. It's actually more than five times the size of Miami. So if you can imagine five Miamis full of people, every man, woman, and child who lives in Miami, or any five cities that are around Miami size, what you're talking about is that's how many people we've got locked up in jails and prisons today. We incarcerate more human beings in the United States than any other nation in the world by a factor of five. Okay? We have far too many people in jail here. And about 15% of them are severely mentally ill. Which is a problem in itself. So when you're talking about that, you're talking about roughly somewhere around 300,000 people who are severely mentally ill, who are not in hospitals, who are not being treated in community mental health centers, but are in prisons and jails. Now that is six times the population of the Florida Keys. So again, you take all the when, men, women, and children in the Florida Keys, mm -hmm. times six, that's how many mentally ill people are in our prisons and jails. That is not something to be proud of. No, none at all. And there's so much to cover this morning, so we're going to take a quick break right now, but we will talk much more about the mentally ill in prisons when we return.